got on this big act, big old bonnet. Look at this. Yeah. Y'all, the enemy came to seek and destroy because I'm pretty sure I'm getting my cycle soon. Anyone else feel, I know this is TMI, my cycles have been off. It's because my ass is getting old. But seriously, I read someone else who said that her cycles has been off too. And she looked young and another woman chimed in, another young lady chimed in and said, yeah, her cycles have been off. My cycles have been off. Like... God. Stress can do that to you though. So anyway, it's Friday. It's Friday and I'm ready to swing. Um, I'm stressed. I did not get any sleep last night. JP woke up at 3.30 in the morning and that is too close to the time I normally get up, which is close to 4.30. So I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got like five hours of sleep last night. My husband is off today, so he's probably going to get on my nerves. <laughs> um, I'm so tired, y'all. Yesterday, I was very frustrated with my job, y'all. Next week is my birthday, and typically I take off a couple of days from my birthday. And those of you who, you know, I spoke in my last vlog that I forgot to take off some days, but my manager still approved several days for me to take off. It is so busy at work. I've had to cancel half those days. When I tell you I am pissed, I am livid. Because I need the time off. I'm stressed out. I'm tired. So I'm only taking off my birthday and my husband's birthday. I originally was going to take off Monday through Thursday. I can't do that anymore because work is so crazy. And my husband had a valid point. He's like, you know, he was sympathetic to me yesterday because I was ranting. And he could tell. I mean, I, I literally was at my laptop from 5 to 2 p.m. off and on but normally I get up and I could do no not yesterday I, I worked that long actually till almost three so my husband he was like you know what that's messed up he's like that you you can't even take a week off he's like I can take a week off and I work in a hospital during a pandemic and you can't even take a couple of days off I said no I can't unfortunately so y'all I think it's about that time for me to look it's not happening anytime soon, but I need to really consider um, where I want to go career-wise because, um, you know, I got it. I got it. I didn't get into it, but my husband's like, well, at least you work from home. I said, that's not the point. I feel like I'm working all the time. And a couple of years ago, um, actually the year we got married, I took an extended leave because I was, but when I tell you I was working at that time, Six days out of the week, 10, 12 hour days, I was, I, anxiety was crazy. I was working a lot. And so I didn't give my manager a heads up. I went to the doctor. I, w I went to go see a therapist for documentation. I didn't need to see a therapist. And not that there's anything wrong with it, baby. If you need to go see a therapist, absolutely do it. But I did it for documentation. I went to go do uh, three therapy sessions, went to another doctor, this doctor. I had them to write me um, documentation that I was stressed due to work. So I took a two and a half week work leave. Didn't give anyone a warning. Just sent my manager an email, sent her the forms. She called me up immediately. She was like, what is going on? I like, I said, work is overwhelming to me. I'm taking off. Um, and I'll be gone. And when you do that, it's up to the manager then to determine who's going to provide, you know, support for you. Baby, when I came back, she was like, we need to talk. Because she ended up even having to do some of my job. It took three people to do my job, y'all. She was like, we need to talk because this is a lot. We need to see what we can do to support you. And it's not that I didn't go to my manager and express my concerns, but it's different when you actually have to do the job. So yeah, y'all, yeah, I'm ranting because it just really ticks me off that now my PTO was cut short because of people. So anyway, um, hey, 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 you guys. It is my birthday. This camera's angled weird. It is my birthday, y'all. Let me go get my Bible. Hold on. Let me pull this down some so I don't be looking fast. So, I feel, man, I'm gonna start crying again. I woke up this morning crying because 
y'all just don't know you know god has kept me he's kept all of us let's just be real and i feel so honored and blessed to have made it to 40 years old i don't feel 40 um it's just an, an age but physically girl I'm, I'm starting to feel it but anyway i am very blessed i, I thank god um for keeping me for keeping my mind y'all just don't know keeping my mind and keeping my body here so y'all i think i'm gonna finish up that story time for y'all because i know some of you have us all waiting on part three and this will be a four part but let me know if y'all are interested in i'm thinking of having my story times um separate from the vlogs because if it was me i would just want to look at the story time girl i don't care what you're doing with jb <laughs> I would just be interested in the story time at this point. You know what I mean? So let me know in the comment section if you're interested. Let me take this big ass bunny off. Child, I did my hair, y'all. I'll be taking it down. This will be a separate video. So this is my birthday. Birthday hair and birthday makeup. I'm, I'm going to be doing a purple, girl, no, a pink and gold beat. I am going to beat the hell out of my face. I'm, um... I checked my birth control yesterday. I'm already stocked up. I'm good. We, the days are, are matching up because, baby, when I tell you, <laughs> I did my hair last night, right? I did my hair last night. So all day, all morning, it was down. So I had half of it up, braided, and then half of it down and out. And y'all, it was down here out big. And now, my husband and, and, and JB, no one sees my hair out like that because it's so much hair. Baby, when I tell you my husband was looking at me like I was a prime rib, I was like, oh, let me put this stuff up and, and, and make sure what it was today. Today's Monday. Yeah, Monday birth control pill needs to be taken now. He loves hair. Um, my husband does. I mean, what man doesn't? But he loves hair. He loves my hair. So, yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, so story time. So, yeah, y'all let me know if you're interested in, um, story time. Doing that. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. I did my nails again. Now, these are looking crazy because I had to get a flip-flop on JB and my nails broke in the process. But it's okay because... It's okay because I'm probably going to do a new set here soon. But ain't this pretty, y'all? These are really, pretty, really pretty. So, yeah, they look good far away. I just did these yesterday again. Because, honestly, these vlogs, bear in mind that this would be the only vlog right now that is more up to date. All right, girl, let's get into the story time. Okay, so where do we leave off? Okay. And I already told JB this part of the of the story, so he won't be upset if he hear me. And y'all, maybe some of my stories, because part three got a little PG-13. So maybe some of the story times will be with JB, and some of them will be just us. Because there's some that I, I want to go there. Well, not necessarily go there, but the topics are too adult. They're adult. They're not for a seven-year-old who think he's 45. So, JB be on his past life clip hit thing or whatever he'd be talking about his past lives which he may anyway so on the last story time we left off with mina driving up to, to the plantation and noticing that there's cop cars there's an ambulance out there so she approaches mr joe she's like mr joe what's happened what's going on and he said oh baby looks like um the housekeeper what's the housekeeper name y'all is it juanita yeah what's the housekeeper's name we're going to name her Juanita. I'm sorry. She 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 has a middle name. Her middle name is more Juanita. Um, Mr. Joe was like, oh, Juanita took a spell on the stairs. It's like in the big house? He's like, yeah, baby, in the big house. But she's okay. She's doing fine. Um, they're going to take her to the hospital just to be looked at, you know, make sure everything's okay. Um, and so Mina sees the paramedics will out Juanita on this stretcher. She has her head wrapped up in the gauze. And so she approaches Miss um, Juanita and she's like, um, is uh, everything okay? Miss um, Juanita tells her, she's like, oh, I was, you know, cleaning. And then I turned around and I saw these men in the house. There's men in the house. And Mina looked confused. And she looked at Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe shook his head. And Mina's like, there was men in the house? She's like, yes, there was men in the house. You know, they're in the house. It was scary. There was, they, they were, um, they ran by me and it caused me to fall down the stairs. 
And so before she could ask her any questions, the paramedics um, wheeled her away. They put her in the, in the um, ambulance and she went off to the hospital. So the cops are walking around. And so Mina's looking at Mr. Joe and Mr. Joe, and Mina's just looking at Mr. Joe like, what's going on? And he's not saying anything, right? So the cops come around and they're like, well, we searched everywhere. We searched the big house. We searched, well, I shouldn't say that. We searched the main house. We searched the guest house and we have people out in the um, fields. We don't see anybody. So maybe, you know, maybe they ran off, but you know, let us know if anything comes up. Um, and then another cops come, another cop comes up behind the one cop that was talking, he says, well, the only thing we didn't search was the, oh, well, Mr. Joe turns around when he hears that. And he's like, oh, there's no, there's no reason to search that. Oh, well, can't nobody be, be down there. And the cops start smiling because they're just kidding with Mr. Joe. They're just kidding when they said that they didn't search the, oh, well, but that kind of shook him a little bit. So Mina thought that was odd, right? And um, so Mr. Joe came up, the cops eventually leave. So Mr. Joe comes up to her comes up to her and say, baby, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and there won't be any tours for today. So you can go ahead and go home um, and we'll just start over in the morning. And so um, don't worry about it. You know, I'll make sure everything's cleaned up. And she's like, all right then, Mr. Joe, I guess I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow. He's like, all right, see you tomorrow, baby. So I Mina mean, thought that was good because she has a final tonight in her law classes. Excuse me, she has a final the next day for her law classes. Um, Cause she only works on the plantation Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and she takes um, classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay? So this is Monday. So Tuesdays is when she has her final. Girl, why do y'all need the details? But details are important, right? So she's like, you know what? I could go ahead and go home, study for this final because I've been just stressed out about it. So she goes home, next day studies for the final, does really good in the final. Um, after she took her test, her classes early in the morning, she noticed she got a text message from her friend Courtney and her friend Courtney's like, girl, um, are you doing anything? She's like, no, nah, I just finished my test. She's like, well, remember, we need to hang out more often. And she texts her back. She's like, yeah, you know, just let me get through um, this last um, few classes and, you know, uh, I'll hit you up then. Then later on, as she's going back to, um, she goes to her car, she gets a call from an unknown number. And she's like, who's calling me from an, from an unknown number? Now, normally she won't answer no unknown calls because it could be anybody. So she's like, let me just go ahead and answer this phone call. So she answered the phone call and the voice sounded familiar. He's like, hey, Mina. She's like, hello? He's like, hey, how you doing? She's like, I'm well, who is this? He's like, it's Quentin. Mina's heart kind of skipped a little bit. She's like, Quentin? She's like, he calling her like literally a few days later. Normally dudes don't call you for like a good week, but this guy called her like within two days. So he's like, look, I was wondering if you were free Thursday night. I got these tickets to the new show um, at the theater and I wanted to know if you would join me. Um, and so Nina kind of paused for a minute. She's like, He's already calling her to go out on a date. She thought they would go hang out, you know, at the bar. So she's like, hmm. She's like, yeah, you know, I heard about that show and I heard it got good reviews. Yeah, I'll, I'm down for it around what time because I got a class early. He's like, oh, we're gonna do the six o'clock. We'll do the six o'clock show. She's like, okay, that'll be good. He's like, well, should I pick you up? And she's like, uh, no, I can meet you there because Mina don't let nobody, when when she was seriously dating, now she took a break from dating since she's, you know, in school. She wants to focus on school. Um, she don't let no man come up into her, know where she lives at. She ain't having it because she does not need any stalkers, right? So she's like, no, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. So um, Thursday comes around, Mina classes were going great. So later on that day, um, she's trying to figure out what she's gonna wear. She's like, okay, you know, I don't wanna be too sexy, but I also don't wanna look, I wanna look nice, you know? So she found something that was really cute. A dress, not too short, really just really nice, okay? But form fitting to show off her curves. So she gets there super early. So the show starts at six, she gets there at 5.30 so she can sit and watch Mr. Quentin comes in. 5.30, 5.35 rolls around. She don't see anything. She's like, oh, we gotta get the wheel, go, go to the wheel call to get the tickets. So 
buy five for it. And she's like, okay, whatever. And she walks up towards the, um, what do you call it? The little box where they have the tickets. And when she turns the corner, there's Quentin sitting down. He'd been there all along, all alone waiting for her. And he has white roses. And she's like, oh, wow. No dude had ever bought her roses before on the first day. So she's like, oh, hey, you know, I was just sitting out in my car waiting for you. He's like, yeah, I know. She thought that was kind of strange. So he gave her her flowers and they went inside the theater and they watched the show. It was a good show, right? They were laughing, had, having a good time. So, and when they walked out, the show was only an hour and a half long. So when they walked out, he was like, look, you know, that was good, but I really want to get to know you and talk to you. We really couldn't talk in there. So um, would you be up to go out to the bar? Um, that one bar I saw you at, you, would you be okay with meeting up there? She thought about it. She looked down at her cell phone and looked at the time. She's like, yeah, I got time. Even though she just had to keep in mind that she has to be at work by 8.30 in the morning. So she's like, yeah, I have time. He's like, so should I drive? But she's like, no, I'll meet you there. Cool. So the bar is only 15 minutes away from the lounge, right? So she goes ahead and she gets there. And so it looks like she's got there uh, sooner before um, Quentin does. So she finds a seat or a table <clears throat> for them. And she orders her a sweet tea. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Hold on. So five minutes go by, then 10 minutes, then 15 minutes. And she's looking around, making sure she didn't miss him. Because that's odd. Because she literally saw him leave the parking lot from the theater the same time she did. It shouldn't take him this long to get here, right? 20 minutes and waiting. She's getting frustrated. That's when she gets a text message from Quentin that basically says, Hey, I'm so sorry. Something came up. I won't be able to make it. That's it. Mina looks down, it was just very vague. And so she wrote back, no worries, thanks for the flowers. She saw that it had been seen, you know, he read it, but no response. So she's like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. So she goes ahead and go home, call it whatever. The week goes by, her friend Courtney's still trying to hit her up to go out. She's like, hey sis, when are we gonna hang out again? I know you busy with classes, it's wrapping up, but we need to hang out. So Mina thinks, what the hell, you know? She normally doesn't like to go out a two or twice in a week, but she's like, what the hell? So she decided she'll go out with Courtney on Friday night, right? She goes through her closet. This time, she ain't gonna be uh, safe with what she's wearing. She finds something that shows all her curves, honey. A little low cut in the front. She does her hair. She does her makeup really nice. Um, Cause typically she's very, um, she doesn't wear a lot of makeup. She knows how to do it, but she just doesn't, she prefers to not to wear a lot of makeup. So she wears her hair really big and pretty, does her face up. And she goes ahead and goes to the bar to meet Courtney, right? And so when she gets there, she already sees her friend at the bar throwing back drinks. She's probably had about two at this point. Um, her friend turns around and she sees her, uh, her friend Courtney. She's like, oh, yes, girlfriend, come on now, sis. <laughs> Mina's kind of shy and embarrassed by that, but she walks over to the friend and, and sits at the bar with her friend Courtney. And she's like, um, her friend Courtney's like, yeah, go ahead and get her a sweet tea because that's all she drinks. And then, but then Mina's like, no, what are you drinking? And she's like, her friend Courtney's like, you gonna have a drink with me? She's like, yeah, just go ahead. She's like, wow, okay, new look, new Mina. <laughs> new look, new Mina bartender. Go ahead and get her a daiquiri. So Mina gets her a daiquiri. 15 minutes into it, she's really feeling this daiquiri because mind you, she doesn't drink. Sister woman does not drink at all, right? Um, so then Courtney's like, um, yeah, girl, let's go ahead and go dance and let's get on the dance floor and dance. And that's another thing Mina doesn't dance and she knows how to dance but she just doesn't want to be this she doesn't like to be in the spotlight she doesn't like attention so no um but Courtney finally convinced her to go out on the dance floor and they're dancing having a good time all of a sudden Mina feels a tap on her shoulder and she turns around there's this almond chocolate looking brother with these light eyes and he's like hey you mind if I dance with you and Courtney's like she she walks off to go back to the bar to her drink and so she dances with the brother and he's fine y'all real fine about six four like i said an almondy color with light pretty eyes um so when they're done dancing and walking off the dance floor he's like you know what my name is what's his name could be y'all devon devon 
And then my name was Devon. He's like, you know, you, you're a great dancer. I saw you when you first came in, you know, um, would you mind, do you have a man? I would like to take your number. She's like, you know what? Hmm. She looked at him, she's like, oh, he's fine. She's like, you know what? Um, I just got a, out of a relationship and I just am trying to focus on myself right now and I'm in school. He's like, okay, that's not a problem, but hopefully I'll see you in here one day again. She's like, yeah. So she makes her way back up to the um, bar and her friend Courtney was like, yes, girlfriend, who was that? She's like, did he, did he ask for your number? Mina's like, yeah, he did. She's like, and you didn't give him to him? She's like, no. And so Courtney's kind of looking at her by now, Courtney has had three drinks, right? So she's real, she's real uh, uh, bold at this point. She's like, well, what seems to be the problem? Mina doesn't know if she should tell him, if she should tell, Mina hasn't really told Courtney about her date with Quentin and she's not sure how she would, re how she would react. So she's like, you remember that guy um, that was up in here the other week, Quentin, the albino guy? She's like, girl, how could I not forget him, Mr. Light Bright? <sighs> Mina kind of rolled her eyes. She's like, well, he took me out to the theater the other night. Um, she's like, oh, word, so y'all went on a date? She's like, yeah, we went out on a date. But later on, we were actually supposed to meet up at here, up at here, and he never showed up. Instead, he sent me a text message, let me know that something had came up. She's like, girl, Look, these men will do that. You cannot let that um, ruin your day. You need to go ahead and give Mr. Almady your phone number. And she's like, no, that's okay. So they hang out, have a good time. Things go well. And, you know, she goes ahead and she goes home. Days go by and she decides to go over to her grandmother's, her grandparents' house for Sunday dinner. And her grandmother says, you know what, Mina, I know you normally don't spend a night on Sunday nights, but would you mind staying because I've been having issues with your grandfather. He's been sleepwalking. She's like, sleepwalking? She's like, yeah, he's been sleepwalking and having night terrors. She's like, oh, Mina's like, oh, that's no problem, big mama. I can stay tonight. Anytime you need me to stay, let me know and I'll be here. Um, she gets another unknown phone call. And she's like, you know what? I'm with my grandparents. I need to focus on them. I'm not answering this. So she ignores the phone call, right? Goes to bed, while she's sleeping, she hears screaming and yelling coming from her grandparents' room. <clears throat> so she gets up, she goes into the grandparents' room, and she sees her grandfather, I guess in the middle of a night terror, and her grandmother trying to calm him down. And she goes in the room, she's like, big mama, do you need, need any help? She's like, baby, he's been at this for a while now. Do you mind staying in here? She's like, well, big mama, yeah, why don't you go into my room and try to get some sleep? And I can stay in here with, with Papa. And she's like, okay. Grandmother goes into the other room to, to get some sleep. Mina uh, sits up in, um, they have a recliner in the bedroom. <clears throat> they have a recliner in the bedroom. And she tries to get her grandfather settled down in bed. He, you know, he's tossing and turning. And at one point she could tell he had been crying because his face is wet. So it finally he gets to sleep and Mina, Mina um, dozes off eventually in the recliner. As soon as she dozes off, she feels something on her, um, on her leg and she opens her eyes and she sees a dark figure in front of her because she's still kind of hazy and sleepy. She, when she really comes through, she sees her grandfather standing in front of her. Mind you, her grandfather has had problems since the stroke from walking. He needs a walker just to stand up, but he's standing straight up in front of her, eyes wide open. Mina kind of looks up at him and says, Papa? And her grandfather looks dead at her and says, beware of the NOA. That's part three, y'all. <laughs> Oh God, I'll have to think of what about part four. I think this is going to end with part four, y'all. Okay, because this is pretty long. Hey y'all, I'm in the background getting my makeup together for later on. I guess my husband called someone to come clean our driveway. Y'all, this man will hire someone. I'm like, we can go rent a pressure washer at Home Depot, but if you want to spend some money, go right ahead. I'm not like that. I'm gonna do it yourself. Um, I want to speak just briefly on this. <sighs> On this new video with Megan Thee Stallion, Megan the Stallion, and Cardi B, y'all, I just don't understand. Like, I feel like those of us who are not feeling this new type of music, it's so rare. It's not a lot of us that are like this. And I'm 
still hip to what's going on and I'm just like when is enough going to be enough? So I saw some of the video and the new video those of you who are not aware is called WAP. W-A-P and it stands for wet as you know what. First of all that's just crass in itself. Um, huh, where do I start? I saw some of the video there was first of all there was symbolism everywhere. I mean very disturbing. Um, very highly sexualized. I mean, when, when are stuff not, you know, sexualized anymore? I didn't even recognize Kylie. I didn't, I did not recognize. I thought it was some fair-skinned Latino or whatever. I thought it was a Latino. I did not know that was her. I didn't recognize the other young ladies who were in the video, but apparently they're in the industry too. Yeah, the video just gave me low vibrational, um, sex cult, um, we're going to have all these women on display for you, for your appetite, and they can do whatever you want. That's what I was getting from it. thing that just with this generation and, and future generation, it's like, when is it going to, when is enough going to be enough? Because, of course, I saw some people who were commenting on just, you know, other people's reactions. And they're, and they're like, I don't know why people are saying that this is too much when you guys had little Kim. Yeah, we had little Kim. So... <laughs> But now we have full-fledged <laughs> videos, music videos that are like that, and it's just too much. I mean, I feel like sooner or later, it's gonna be full-on nudity and videos, and that's gonna be acceptable. I'm, I'm just sick of this highly over-sexualizing fetish of black women. And I get it, you know, I saw comments, and well, there's the double standards men can talk about, you know, um, uh, laying the pipe for women and all this and why can't women express this? You can. I'm not saying that. But at what point is enough going to be enough? This is the sky. Y'all, right, here are the ingredients for this um, vanilla eggs. velvet cake I'm making. Yeah, there's eggs. So one of the things that I'm going to do that I have to do is put out all the ingredients at room temperature to bring it up. Now, I am missing ingredients. This is supposed to be a layered chantilly cake and I am missing, missing heavy cream and mascarpone cheese, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, we can have it again the next day, but is whatever. Butter? Yeah, that's butter, it's baby. So we have sorry. here... Um, cake batter? Okay, so I have ingredients for the icing and for the uh, cake set out. So I'm going to put the, the ingredients for the icing. I'm going to just go ahead and do a cream cheese buttercream icing for the quote unquote icing. And I'm going to ice this as a very naked cake, meaning it's going to be a thin layer of icing. It's Yay. not going to be that thick because it's, this is going to be, um, I'm making a filling, a berry filling. Now I'm debating. I don't know if I really want to go get that heavy cream. I honestly don't like heavy cream. You know what I'll do? I'll substitute with a little bit of milk. I'll just add a little bit of milk in there. I typically either have half and half in the fridge. I don't have anything. I have buttermilk, half milk, almond milk. Yeah, half and half is half cream, um, half milk. That's why it's called half and half. Um, and then you have heavy cream, which is all cream. So anyway, that's what I'll do. I'll add a little bit of milk to this so it won't be so, you know, rich. So anyway, for the ingredients for the cake itself, we have five eggs. It's going to be egg whites. One cup of buttermilk, two sticks of butter, vanilla. I got the good Mexican vanilla, vanilla. girl. Mm -hmm. Baking powder, sugar, good. vegetable oil. Probably won't need that. I don't know why I put this out here. This should be um, Salt, and we're going to be using cake flour. I got this on clearance a while back, and I knew I wanted to make my cake from scratch, so that's why I got it. Oh, even worse. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is what the cakes looks like. A little bright here, I know. So cakes, hold on, y'all. That's a little bit better. Cakes turned out really, really great. So this is my buttercream cream cheese. Well, I should say cream cheese frosting. This is my filling. And this is some fresh berries I'm going to put on top, okay? So I'm going to do a thin layer of this fill of this icing. I'm going to put this on the middle um, and then put the cake on top and we'll see. Hey you guys, okay, I'm gonna be doing a pink and gold beat. I'm going to beat, 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 beat. Um, bow, bow, bow. <laughs>
I don't need the remix version. Thank y'all. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, what you doing? I'm doing my makeup. Okay, you going somewhere today? I'm going in my living room. What was she doing, <laughs> Granny? This birthday, look at my hair. Oh Lord, my hair is really growing. I mean, yeah, it grew. Yes, the stress has come through. Waist, maiden form girdle. Boo boo. JB was like, "Where are you going? To the living room." <laughs> no, we're no, we're going to ch um raising Canaan in room four. Yeah, pick up. That's what that is. Just pick up. Oh, look at this blue up here. Oh yeah, let me show y'all my balloon. <laughs> so gaudy. It's huge. Another year of fabulous. Uh, yeah, it has fur on it. But but the ones that but the ones that say forty are way too expensive. They were way too expensive. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. 